little pretty mama. Hi. How you doing, Piper? Real reason why I'm coming out here with you guys is to show you that we brought Hazel and her baby out. I don't know why they're over here in this dirt when there's so much more to explore. Hi, Bella. And then Miss Hope, it's the white one back there. Mister's on the other side of the fence. Bella always wants attention. Yeah. Hi. And then Hazel and Cookie, they decided to go in the actual area that they will be closed in eventually. Not yet. At night, we're going to still take these two out and put them back um, in the stalled area where uh, Cookie was born just because it's familiar and um, I don't really think there's a whole lot of room for all of them out here so I'd rather them just be in a familiar spot at night um, especially because we don't know what kind of predators are out here yeah Cookie's still pretty small so we don't want anything to happen to her Ruby's around here somewhere she's gotten a little standoffish uh, I'm not quite sure <laughs> oh no Baby, that's not nice, huh? Oh, what are you eating, Hope? Hope? Um, I'll get, oh gosh, she's going to get shocked again. Oh, Cookie, come here. Yeah, see. Hey, baby. It's all right. I know. Yeah. See, she's not used to the, not used to the electric fence. It's all right, Cookie. Poor baby. Go up and around. Go up. Yep. Keep going. There you go. There you go. All right. Hope is over here eating um, persimmons. We have two huge persimmon trees. Um, you could see all of them on the ground right there so these persimmons if they're super soft and squishy then they're good but if they're hard they are so nasty so ruby decided to come back Don't touch it. Ruby. Hi. Hi, Ruby. Ruby's kind of leader of the pack right now. Cookie is the only baby that we have at the moment so this is going to be uh, they're all going to be on edge a little bit hi baby hi baby This is Mr. Mr. Troublemaker. <laughs> you know, as you guys know, we disbud our goats, but male goats are sometimes challenging to disbud. And this guy, unfortunately, his disbudding did not go as planned. But that's okay because we plan on keeping him. Oh, and he loves to use them. Is she? Good morning. You guys are going to see that she is tied up. The reason why she is tied up is because 
she is the leader of the cows as you guys know we have mama daisy over here and then we have abby and zeke which are oh zeke is right there and abby's got to be around here somewhere towards the back of our pasture oh my gosh this guy keeps on hitting my leg near our pond back there uh, there is a break in the fence that is really hard to get to and we haven't been able to fix it yet and she keeps on leading everybody out but as long as she is tied up the other two won't go anywhere so she has a nice really big rope she's able to make it to the water just fine and she has plenty of grass to eat so she's perfectly fine and she calls the other two and they come up oh, there's Abby Abby's in with the goats. She's so silly. They're all doing fine. And we're going to, eventually when we get a chance, we're going to be squaring this area off here. And they will be in this section over here. I know, I see you. Now you want to come and say hi. Hmm? Now you want to say hi? It's on your time, huh? I know. It's always on your time. You're dirty. You're dirty. You're a good girl. You're a good girl. Good morning. I'm Jennifer. <laughs> this is Antonio. You guys are watching Murillo Family Farm. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us this morning. We are going to be going out to the pond, so we're going to take you guys along and uh, show you our cool little trails. For right now, just to kind of give you an idea of where we're standing, we're kind of like halfway, be almost like maybe a quarter of the way through our property. Our house is right there that's the front there is a trail that goes all the way around over to the trees as you can see through here sergeant likes to sleep down into the um like there's a a berm down here and sergeant goes in there and sleeps that's his spot he loves being underneath this tree and uh it's actually kind of cool under here. Just always got to make sure you don't run into a spider web. But we are one day going to clean it up down here. But it's pretty cool. And you can see like how it goes down right there. It probably drops about four feet. But he goes down there and <laughs> that's where he sleeps. Probably because it's nice and cool. It is cool. I don't feel any bugs. And if it was like this all the time... You would never catch me inside the house. What kind of birds are those? Those are swallowtails. Those are swallowtails? Mm -hmm. Oh. There's, I don't know if you guys can see them, but there's a bunch of birds, swallowtails, flying around.
this is where we drive through to get to the other side of our property and our property line goes back to those bigger dark green trees and one day we'll get in here with a bush hog and clean all of this out. But man, you guys, look how beautiful that is. It is so, so nice out today. Like, I am really, really loving this. We do this walk a lot, and it's usually really humid. Um, but it's not even humid out right now. It's just really nice and breezy. Super, super nice. Fall is definitely in the air. Over here, this used to be a commercial pig parlor, but the government came and the EPA. the EPA came. Told them that, they, that their pond wasn't deep enough or something to run off of the pigs. Right. So, so, you know, the EPA wants to get in everybody's business. So they they shut it down. They, they knocked it all down. The EPA came and told them that either they made the pond deeper or bigger or they had to make, knock down the buildings. Now, for me personally, I would have just stopped producing the pigs and left the buildings because this is a concrete slab and I can only assume that the building that was here was a pretty decent sized building. So it kind of sucks that they actually took down the building, but they did. Um, the structure is completely gone, but we do have a really good concrete slab here. So if we wanted to put some, I don't know, uh, if we wanted to put a couple of cabins out here or something like that we have a good foundation to start on to build off of which is super cool literally the pond is right on the other side I'm sure you see it right there as you can see there is a bunch of um, cinder blocks and uh, there's hoses of some sort plumbing hoses I'm sure um, there's some piping down there but there's all kinds of stuff in here that one day we're gonna have to come through here and just clean all of this up. Over here, there's another small little concrete slab here and another small concrete slab right there. And then if you go this way, so we're on the back side of the property right now. That's our property line with those trees there. There's another concrete slab of some sort right here there's a wall right there there's a wall yeah okay so there was a wall right here and then another concrete slab right here so this is the spot here that i think would make a really nice little cabin i mean this is a pretty good size so it goes from there there maybe in the future either this is where we'll put a, a house or a cabin or something like that because the foundation is already here so 
might as well use it put it to good use and uh, what I like about this side of the property is there's this nice tree right here and of course we have the tree line right there so there's a lot of privacy and this section over here with all these woods it's a pretty good amount of acreage that goes from here to the corner of the main road and you know maybe one day somebody will want to sell some of it and then we'll have all that land there but of course we don't know what those people's plans are we don't even know who they are um so we'll just keep our eyes open if there's ever a for sale sign on their property but there's some there's some more trees that are on our property right there not much though so all of this is pretty much cleared with trees we would just have to get a bush hog through here what we've talked about and this is nothing set in stone of course but we bought the house and the land for a really good price because that house is as you guys know if you've been watching our channel a total disaster um we're about halfway through but we still have a lot of work left to do and it's something that we've thought about is possibly keeping the house over there once we finish the house and fixing it up and stuff maybe selling the house with about five acres or so and keeping the rest of the acreage for ourselves and building something closer to the pond and that way we can really get a house that we want um and i think that once that house is fixed up if we sold that with five acres even though there's no pond over there um there are a few structures and i think we can get a lot more than what we paid for this um so the goal would be to just build on this side like i said closer to the pond kind of further away from the main road and um this is again just futuristic thinking uh nothing set in stone but it would be kind of cool just to be a little bit closer to the pond um so we were thinking that that bigger slab over on the other side we could put a nice house there maybe a two-story um, cabin or something the barn could be over here we can siphon the water from the pond because the pond is fed through a natural creek that comes somewhere um, you know there's really not a whole lot of water where we live as far as lakes or anything like that um, there's a man-made lake but um, that's like 20 minutes away and there's no creeks or anything there's little little creeks but no, no large water sources around here it's kind of nice to know that this pond here is always going to have water in it no matter what even though there's no huge water source around here Oh, here I have something interesting for you guys this is something that grows wild here and we are not quite sure what they are this is what the vine looks like but when it was alive it had very prickery leaves this is what comes off These right here, 
you can kind of see it here, but these rip purple berries are called beauty berries. You just kind of pull them off like this and you shake them, make sure there's no bugs on them. These actually don't have any bugs at all, which is no bugs. Here is another example of the bush. They're not ready. I thought they were. They look like this where they just bunch up one after another, after another, after another. And this tree is absolutely loaded with them. And one of the things that they're really good for is they're loaded with antioxidants, but the leaves themselves are actually um, bug repellent, which is really, really interesting to me. But I'm gonna try, not all of these, but just a couple of them. Honestly, they, they pop in your mouth. They're seedy kind of tasting, not nutty. Um, I won't say that I love them. I heard that they're really good to put on top of a salad to give it like a little bit of a crunch. I could see that. Kind of like a, um, um, a bean sprout. As far as flavor, I don't really get a good flavor from them. I've also heard that people make jelly out of those berries. I don't know how they would do that. The flavor is just really not there. Ah, these girls here, as you can see, uh, they just go right through the fence. And this has been going on for a while and it really wouldn't take much to just add an extra strand of fencing right there. Um, but you know, we have like 10 million other things to do so. Um, not gonna happen but they come in and out of the yard uh, Ruby and Piper don't do it so often but definitely this guy Bella hope they're all usually in the yard they don't go anywhere but they're doing great and then Abby and Zeke are over here just waiting you gonna come and say hi huh Abby Abby has been very skittish, you guys. I've said this multiple times. Hi. Um, since they've just been kind of, you know, doing whatever they want out here in the pasture and we've had no, like, real reason. We're not feeding them grain um, because they have all this grass. So we're trying to cut down on our feed bill. And when you have this amount of grass, uh, they shouldn't have to eat grain. And to be honest with you, my cows are not skinny. They are in excellent condition. Um, they're not hurting at all. So if we noticed that they looked malnourished or anything like that, we would definitely give them some grain to, you know, help out with anything else that they might need. But they're doing amazing out here on this grass. Um, even though they were not born being grass fed, uh, they have adjusted very nicely with this guy down here between my legs. Look, he's always, the babies are always such a pain in the butt. Uh, but Abby's being super friendly right now, uh, maybe because it's nice and cool out and uh, she's just wanting to say hi. Hi. Jeez Louise. We are still not 100% sure whether or not these two have mated yet. Hopefully, we are hoping that they're all they're both pregnant, but we don't know yet. I have not seen anybody mounting each other for probably the last month. And yes, we can pet this guy too. If you guys are wondering, even though he's a bull and he's a mini zebu, and mini zebus sometimes have a bad name, uh, they get a bad rap because some of them can be a little, you know, they're bulls, so. They can act like jerks sometimes, but he's a pretty good boy. Every now and then he gets a little feisty and wants to swing his head at you and stuff like that. But for the most part, uh, not like swing his head to attack you, but swing his head to like say, stop touching me. Um, but for the most part, he's pretty good boy. Doesn't give anybody any problems. And that's it. We're back home. Um, it's a nice little walk. The full thing, if you go around the entire perimeter just on our side here not on the other side that you have to cross over with the vehicle it takes about a good 
20 to 30 minutes so it's a nice little walk um i enjoy it oh, golly this breeze if you can see the trees are kind of swaying a little bit it is so nice out so nice and i don't feel not one gnat in the air so this mwah, is perfect <laughs> perfect weather if it could just be like this year round that would be paradise no, no places Paradise. Year yes, it is. If it was like this all the time, that would be my paradise. So, Lord, if you're listening, which I know you are, <laughs> make this my paradise, please. Uh, so far, he's listening because I've been, I've been praying on that lately. But um, yeah, so hopefully, I really enjoy the fall and the winter and the spring here. But summer, eh. I say no to summers. But if it's only a couple months out of the year, I can handle that. And I still have this in my pocket. So I'm gonna cut this really quick. And uh, I was told to show you our squirrels. They're doing amazing. They're outside in this little um, enclosure. This is where we usually put the baby chicks when we find some baby chicks. And these guys are doing great. They absolutely love my husband. I don't hold them that often. The neighbor loves them. She wants one so bad, but her parents won't let her. Um, they nibble. They don't bite, but they no. do nibble. And I don't like rodents nibbling on me. Um, and they look funny on their face because my husband gives them blueberries and strawberries and watermelon and nuts and seeds and all kinds of stuff. So, uh, they always get it stuck all over their face. You can see this one. This is nut job. This is nut, ah, nut job. Just jumped on the camera. Just kidding. <laughs> oh, and adapted. <laughs> So, I got a name for them Nut job wanted to come on the camera. No, they really don't have names. This is the prettier one of the two. This one looks more light and just prettier, where the other one is just dark and ratty looking. <laughs> this is my, out of the two of them, this one's my favorite. This one's a cutie. Little cutie. I well, the girl is ugly. The boy is cute. And they got peanuts in there, and they've got like a little... Um, they have like a little mixture right there that was suggested for. Oh, Mom, get I your butt in there. I'm scared. No, yeah, you might catch your little hands. Move your little fingers. Good. Okay. You sure you're gonna? Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Unless the other one was up hey, there. Mom. Oh, they love sitting right here on oh, the light. Yeah. They're always sitting right there. As you can tell, they've pooped all over it. They love climbing around. And then we feed them with the, the chicken water and you know the chicken food stuff but it works great yeah um so will you please make me eggs and french toast oh me? yes of course anything for my <laughs> you're welcome all right so i don't think that this thing is fully ripened yet but i'm just gonna cut it open to see what the inside looks oh, like one this one is right whoops they are slippery little things all right, so they're very, very seedy. Very seedy. You could probably eat those, though, I'm assuming, because they're such, such small seeds. Look, the seeds just kind of smushed right out. Boy, there's a lot of seeds in there. Let me see what it smells like. Oh, that's an odd smell. It just smells green. I don't know. If you know what this is, please let me know. We'll do a little bit more research on it to find out what it is. But, um, yeah, we got this growing wild back there. A bunch of those. We have a bunch of those beauty berries. We have persimmons. Um, just wild American, persimmons. American. The American persimmons. I wish they were the Asian persimmons, but unfortunately they're not. They're just the good old wild persimmons. So they, you kind of have to wait for them to drop off the tree, get really mushy before you eat them. Because if you bite into them while they're still like not ripened enough, they will make your mouth very dry and they taste disgusting in my opinion. And even when they are ripe, personally, I don't like the mushiness of them. Um, my husband loves them. I do not. And what else? I think, um, oh, and we also, I found this on the ground yesterday. And this is just one of the tangerines off our tangerine tree that we have that's um, right on the other side of the trailer here or the ark as we call it. Um, 
we call it the ark because we brought all of our animals in that trailer all of them <laughs> so it is our ark but uh that's it for today guys hope you enjoyed this make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed hit the notification bell so you know the next time that we post a video leave us some comments down below it'll help grow our channel and get out to more people and we'd love to share our experience and our adventures and our journey with you guys so thank you guys so much until next time you guys be blessed we'll see you later bye, bye.